Hello everyone, this is the Insert Title Show and I am your host, Wolf Strife. On this episode, I am going to be talking about the book Cracking the Egyptian Code, The Revolutionary Life of Jean-Francois Champollion, written by Andrew Robinson. I believe this book came out in 2012 and is a really good book. Um, basically how I even know about Jean-Francois Champollion the man who deciphered Egyptian hieroglyphs uh, is because of a BBC miniseries that was on Netflix for a couple of years. I think it was called Egypt. Um, there were six episodes. Uh, two episodes dealt, uh, dealt with Howard Carter finding King Tut's tomb. Uh, another two dealt with Belzoni. And then the final two dealt with Jean-Francois Champollion deciphering the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. And it was a really good show, and I learned a lot from it. And naturally, um, I thought it was very well acted, and the story was just really amazing. So after watching that, I went around trying to see if there were any books or anything on Jean-Francois Champollion. And there weren't too many. Basically, this was the only one that looked really, really good that I could find on Amazon. So I got it. And um, it's a very nice book. I believe it's from Oxford Publishing. I believe it's the first book I ever got from Oxford. I mean, I have some other ones from famous colleges. Like, I think I have a World War I book um, from Yale and stuff. So, yeah, they're kind of... These books are usually pretty pricey from colleges, but they are, they are always very, very nice. Like, the quality... I mean, the paper on this book is very nice, and the illustrations are beautiful, and uh, it's just a very, very nice book. And I think I got it for a really good price on Amazon. I think it was on sale for like 12 bucks hardcover. I was like, uh, yeah, buying that. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, it's a really, really good book, and Andrew Robinson does a really good job explaining just everything that happened. Um, and Andrew Robinson was definitely a good choice for the author of this book because he had previously written a book on Michael Ventris, who was the guy that deciphered the Minoan language, Linear B. So I think Andrew Robinson was definitely well suited to uh, write about Jean-Francois Champollion. And Robinson does a really good job just detailing everything and you know, just going step by step because uh, there's a lot to get through here. Um, he starts with uh, Jean-Francois Champollion's early years, where he was born, his family, and then just goes from there. And, uh, I mean, it was a crazy time in which Champollion grew up in. I mean, you got the French Revolution going on, you got Napoleon, you have all these different forces acting in Europe at this time, and all these great discoveries are being made in Egypt, thanks to Napoleon's uh, Egyptian campaign. You know, that's where they found the Vizetta Stone and just all this other stuff. And I guess that's kind of where the story starts, is with the discovery of the Vizetta Stone, and uh, that's basically what gets scholars in Europe trying to figure out how to decode the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs because this language has been dead for 2,000 years, maybe. So, yeah, kind of hard trying to figure that out. I mean, there were hundreds of scholars working on this just trying to figure it out. And the thing with ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, uh, there isn't just the hieroglyphs that, you know, everybody knows. There's also two other types of writing, heretic and demotic, which of course only complicates things. Basically, heretic is kind of Egyptian cursive, kind of like our cursive, and demotic is, I believe, kind of the, just the common writing. Basically, the popular, like everybody knows how to write demotic, I guess that would put it in American terms. Heretic would be cursive and demotic would be just regular print, you know. So yeah, Andrew Robinson goes through Jean-Francois Champollion's early years, his college years, his education, and just how brilliant the man Jean-Francois Champollion was. I mean, just his ability with languages and just all that. And just the fact that he was born, you know, kind of poor. I mean, he's having a 
hold down jobs while he's trying to figure out ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. And Robinson also goes into Thomas Young, which I thought was very interesting, kind of the, I guess, the dueling uh, scholars going at it, trying to see who can uh, figure out hieroglyphs first. Uh, so you had Thomas Young and uh, Champollion going at it a little bit. But um, Jean-Francois Champollion had a lot of enemies in academia, so he wasn't really just going up against Young. He was also having to go up against, you know, half the uh, linguists of France, pretty much. And uh, it was just an interesting time period, man. This is probably my favorite time period is the early 19th century France. Just all these kind of uh, Republican and uh, liberal ideas going on and just uh, Napoleon and all that kind of stuff. Like Jean-Francois Champollion and his brother actually, I think, worked for Napoleon when he came back after Elba. So, yeah, (laughs) definitely an interesting time to live in. And then the book also details when uh, Champollion finally got to go to Egypt to test his theories on hieroglyphs and... uh, that was actually a really interesting part of the book. It was just uh, kind of an adventure story. And uh, there were also some really nice illustrations that went along with that. And um, Robinson definitely made sure to make note of all the myriad health problems that Jean-Francois Champollion suffered from. Um, I mean, he seemed to have poor health as a child. And uh, he ended up dying pretty young at the age of 41 from a stroke. But there were probably some other issues going on there. And oddly enough, Jean-Francois Champollion died on my birthday, March 4th. So <laughs> that's kind of interesting. But um, yeah, it's just an amazing story about an amazing man. And uh, I mean, you could say he's the father of modern Egyptology. I mean, the only reason why Howard Carter knew King Tut's name was because of Jean-Francois Champollion's work. So... Yeah, I mean, if you're interested in ancient Egypt or languages, then definitely check this book out. It was really very well written. And um, Robinson did a really good job just showing you the process of figuring out hieroglyphs. And uh, I actually learned kind of how to read hieroglyphs by reading this book. I definitely wouldn't mind learning how to do that one day, but it's a very, very complicated language. I think... um, Trying to remember, there was a quote in the book, I think, from uh, Jean-Francois Champollion. He said that Egyptian hieroglyphs are all at once figuratively, symbolically, and phonetically written. So it's <laughs> you just kind of have to figure out, okay, what is this meaning at this point right here? Like, okay, is it doing this or is it meaning that? I mean, it's just kind of... It's very, very, very complicated. And like I said before, it's not easy having three different writing systems because you got hieroglyphs, you got heretic, and you got demotic. So yeah, kind of kind of crazy. And I thought it was very interesting too because at the time that this uh, was being figured out, uh, Europeans were also discovering and working on Chinese at the same time and uh, there were a lot of parallels between Chinese characters and Egyptian hieroglyphs like I mean imagine trying to write a uh, French dictionary for Chinese characters like that would be kind of tricky kind of tricky so yeah it was definitely just a fascinating time and a fascinating book so Yeah, definitely check this out if you want to. I really enjoyed it.